In today's macro photography tutorial, I'm photographing possibly the most dangerous plant I've ever shot. Now, of course, I'm being dramatic, I'm photographing stinging nettles, which, although not particularly dangerous, do have a nasty sting to them. I want to get up close with my macro lens, get some interesting photos, and potentially discover what it is about these very common plants that gives it that nasty, annoying sting. Stick around, and I'll get started in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adaptalux and welcome back to another macro photography tutorial where today we are photographing stinging nettles. Now I'm a little bit reluctant to pick these up. Um, I have already been stung collecting them. I expect to get stung photographing them as well. Um, but I think these are going to make for a really interesting macro subject, far more interesting than just regular leaves. Although if you look at these leaves, they, they really don't seem all that interesting to the naked eye. But if you look at the stems and on some of the leaves, you can start to notice tiny little stingers. These are the things that are causing those stings when you touch them or when you uh, brush up against them. Um, and I want to get a much, much closer look at those stingers and see what they're all about. It's very difficult to uh, photograph a subject that you're not actually able to touch. So I've got uh, a dishcloth here. I might have to go and get some gloves as well, but I'm going to do my very best to not get stung too many times during this shoot. First thing I need to do, put my camera onto a tripod and pick an appropriate lens. So I am shooting on a tripod today, mostly because I don't want to be moving around too much in the vicinity of these nettles. I know myself and I will be concentrating too much and end up brushing against them and I'll get stung, which would be annoying, but the things we do for our photography. Um, so I'm going to be placing my camera on the tripod. I'm also going to be doing some focus stacking. So I've got a, a manual focusing rail on the bottom of my camera ready to go. And the lens that I've chosen today is the uh, Lauer 25 millimeter f2.8 ultra macro lens, which has a 2.5 times magnification up to a five times magnification. Hopefully that's going to be close enough uh, to uh, get some of the details on these nettles and really get a good exploration of what causes those annoying stings. Now there's one last piece to this equation and that's going to be some lighting. I think the placement of our lighting will be critical to getting the, the proper detail out of these nettles and showing those tiny little barbs all over all of the stems and the leaves. So as you can see, just placing the camera at five times magnification up against one of these stems, you can really start to see all of these little spines come out. Uh, now, it's not particularly clear right now because we've got some, well, frankly, awful settings. We're at ISO 20,000, but we've also had to set the lens to f2.8, which is really not good enough. The, uh, the depth of field there is very, very shallow. So um, we're going to have to add some lighting to improve our settings. I'm also hoping that adding some lighting is going to improve the uh, clarity of some of those spines. However, just this initial view of this stem, you can really see why these things are so hated. Um, all of those tiny little spines coming out of the edge. I don't know whether these little ones are the ones that will give you the sting or whether it's perhaps these bigger ones, um, but we'll certainly get to find out as we get a more clearer picture. Now I'm going to grab some lighting and place it uh, in an appropriate place, which might take a little bit of experimentation. So then guys, with a, just a single white Lighting Arm S from the Adapter Look Studio placed really, really close to that stem, you can see that we've actually managed to get up to uh, F8 over here, and uh, ISO is down to 800, uh, still at 1 60th of a second, and you can see that that has made uh, a huge difference to our image already. The depth of field is much, much wider, and we can actually start to see some of those larger spines and how nasty they look. Now, I want to uh, take this even further, do a focus stack, and maybe get this entire stem in focus so that we can really see the quantity uh, of those little spines and how nasty this stem actually is. So taking that last shot to the next level, I've added another super bright white lighting arm 
S into the uh, into the control pod, and I've added a black background. I didn't quite like how messy the background of that last shot was. You could see one of the other stems in the background, but now we're looking down into this sort of um, area underneath one of the leaves, and I think that's where the majority of the little spines, the stingers, are hiding. So I want to try and get underneath as many of these leaves as possible and see what we can do with um, an extra little bit of light. Flexible lighting like the Adapt Look Studio is definitely helpful for a shot like this. Being able to get your lights down and in between all of those leaves while not disturbing too much of the subject is really, really handy. Uh, and it's especially handy because I don't want to get too close to these leaves. Um, I don't want to get stung. So uh, being able to bend those lighting arms around into the position I need them, it's really handy. Um, one thing I am noticing as I'm exploring all of these various stems and leaves is that there's two different types of stingers. There's the smaller ones which almost look like hairs. I don't know whether they actually do any stinging because it's impossible to get close enough to, uh, to touch any of them without getting stung by the bigger ones, but I suspect maybe the small ones are to fend off things like aphids or slugs, and the bigger ones are for bigger predators like, well, like us. Um, whether or not the small ones do any stinging, I don't know, you'd have to ask a stinging nettle expert, but uh, the big ones certainly look very nasty and the overwhelming urge that I'm getting is to just poke one of them and see what kind of action it takes against you. What is it that's actually giving you that sting? Now, I really don't want to do this with my fingers. Um, I might resort to doing it with my fingers just to see what the actual um, movement of these stingers is like and how they react to the presence of something pushing against them. But for now, I think I'm going to set up a shot where I can press uh, something a little bit less sensitive than my finger against one of these stingers and see what it does. So I tried pressing on these little stingers using uh, a knife and when I gave up on that I did eventually resort to trying to press it with the end of my finger and what I found is actually I didn't get stung. Um, I tried quite hard to get the, uh, the stinger to penetrate into my skin and give me a sting but it just bends out of the way. And that's really interesting because I have done a little bit of research now on how these stingers operate and they're supposed to break off into your skin and inject toxins uh, which are what gives you that stinging sensation when your body reacts to those chemicals in your skin and they try and rid your body of these things that aren't supposed to be there. Um, so those larger ones they look like they actually have a mechanism on there that is supposed to inject uh, toxins into your skin as you get stung. However, they're also very flexible. It's not like a thorn on a rose where you press it and it goes into your skin as long as you press hard enough. If I press harder, it just bends out of the way. So is it worth risking getting stung by stinging nettles to get some cool macro photos? Well, of course, I think the answer is yes. Um, perhaps you think, ah, well, Ben's done it, so I don't have to. But I think that these are more interesting than the majority of normal leaves and plants out there. Of course, they're not beautiful, colorful flowers, but the microscopic detail in all of those tiny little stingers is something that you can't really see with the naked eye. Now you're gonna pose just as much risk getting down on your hands and knees and getting your face up close to these things in the wild, a single gust of wind and you're going to be, uh, you're going to be stung. So I do recommend uh, grabbing some with some gardening gloves, bringing them inside and trying this in a controlled environment with some uh, appropriate lighting that's going to give you the settings that you need to get the magnification required to get up close to the stingers on these things. So uh, 2.5 to 5 times magnification on the Lauer 25mm f2.8 lens was perfect for this shoot. I didn't have to get any closer and I wouldn't want to be any further away because then you're really going to start to lose that detail. I think the stacking really added to these shots as well, being able to see all of those stingers in their multitude all at once without worrying about depth of field was really, really interesting. 
I'd like to know from you guys what you thought to stinging nettles as a macro subject today. Let me know down in the comments whether you learned something. I think I've learned quite a lot about how uh, the stingers work on these things. They're not quite as rigid as I thought. I thought they would be more like just tiny little thorns, but actually they're quite soft. So you have to uh, really approach them in a certain way to manage to get stung when you're being as careful as I am. Um, I can see why you get stung if you brush up against them, but uh, they're not quite as scary as I first thought. Uh, if you did learn something today, make sure to hit the like button on the video and hit subscribe for lots more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration coming in the future. For now, that is all I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.